Welcome. I'm going to show you how to do a simple sword attack um, mechanic in Scratch. So as you can see here, I have this little character, um, which I have gotten from a pack on itch.io. I'll leave a, a link in the description. And uh, as you can see, I haven't implemented any damage, so the enemies just go straight through me. However, if I press the spacebar, I can attack using this sword and they simply disappear. So let's go and have a look at how this is implemented. So to start off with, there is the player code. Your movement code um, might look different than that. Um, but one thing to notice um, here is that um, we are actually pointing the play in our movement code left and right um, with the left right rotation style, um, because that will be important for the sword being uh, able to follow the play around correctly. So here is the sword itself. And I just want to bring your attention to um, in the costumes here, uh, hopefully you can see that there is the center point of the image and the sword is actually offset down and to the right. And the reason is, is that that's where I want it to appear down and to the right. And the reason I've made that offset in the sprite itself is because then in the code, I can simply get it to uh, constantly go to the player's exact position and then point in whatever direction the player is pointing um, and it will flip around side to side or if I've put rotation style left right. So that means that when I run the code here, if I, uh, no matter which way I'm facing, it uh, should appear in the correct spot. And then this is the code to make it appear. So uh, wait until the space key is pressed. Um, Oops, and the reason I've got a wait until not the space key is pressed there is just so that it, it doesn't repeat if you hold the space key. So if I go in here and hold the space key, it's going to wait until it's not pressed and then wait till it's pressed again. Um, and then start sound, I've just modified one of the ones on, on Scratch. Um, and then show, wait a split second and hide. And I've also got a tiny bit of time at the end so that you can't just spam the sword. You have to be a little bit more strategic with it um, when you use it. The final thing then is the enemy uh, and the enemies up here, um, just to show you this code, you, your code will probably be different for your enemies, um, but my enemies, uh, this is just the code to make them appear and move across the screen. This is the really important code here. So basically uh, when I start as a clone forever, if touching the sword, not the player, the sword, uh, then delete this clone. And then if the sword is hidden, uh, then it won't cause any problem to the uh, enemy at all. Now you could change this, delete this clone, you could add something, some sort of animation at the end or some sort of dying animation or something like that or add sounds. But it is important you use delete this clone if you're using clones, uh, not hide because if you hide heaps of clones, they'll make your game laggy and you might run into the 300 clone limit at some point. Um, so good luck. Uh, I'll just quickly shoot through that code again, player code and the sword code and the um, code here for the enemy. Uh, good luck and happy coding.